<laughs> big, big news here. Tevita Pengai Jr. Uh, quits the game and has decided to become a boxer. Now, this was a curveball that just came out of nowhere late this afternoon. Uh, we're just getting ready for the show. Gordy was getting his hair on our hair, but makeup done. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Buzz Rothfield breaks the story. Uh, what's our take on, on this one? Yeah, look, uh, what I do know, guys, is that Tavita Pangai Jr. fronted the playing group mm. this morning to break the news that mm. uh, he believes that not only does he feel as though his game has fallen to a standard of which isn't acceptable at an NRL level, he also has an ambition to be a boxer. Um, and, 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 as such, first rep side this year. and as such, state of origin. he approached the club to, for a release. He approached the club. It's my understanding that he approached the club and it has been in the background for some time and discussions yeah. uh, about his standards. This is a guy, Braith, mm. who's, who, uh, what, a powerhouse front row is what we see him at. Mm. 18 tackle bus this season. That's it. Yeah. Right? His performance on Sunday was terrible. Yeah. Right? No, I'm okay and with I've that. got no doubt. I understand that. Last what I, what I don't understand. Last Sunday's performance was a catalyst so you to think, this decision. So you think that Tavita Pangai walks into the office and 750k a year he's on next year, and he yeah. walks in and he goes, you know what, guys? I'm done. Yeah. I'm going to go box for 15k a fight. If you believe yeah. that, you believe in the tooth fairy. This mate. is a bloke that's also been through three managers in the space of two seasons. But right. do you think he, that he, do you think he, that he's been? Tavita Pangai Jr. beats to his own drum. He's a different individual he's to beaten, most footballers. He's beaten to the wrong drum if he hasn't got something out of this. You don't just walk away, do you? Oh, look, you don't you don't walk away from seven hundred and fifty thousand and whatever's remaining on on this year's contract unless there's something in it for you. I'll tell you now, it would not surprise me one bit to see Tavita Pengai playing somewhere else in the not to, not so distant future. Like it just. It makes sense. The guy's, what is he? He's 27 years of age. Yeah. He, he's got all the talent in the world. You're right, Dave. He has hasn't he? aimed up. No. Well, he has. He has yeah. got all the talent he in the world. They don't think he's the state of origin this yeah, year yeah. because he can't play. He's got, he's got talent. He's got p potential. And if he can find someone who can, can get that out of him and unlock it, who which could, has been... Who could that someone I, I, be? I don't course. know. Like, you know what? He has a, he has a relationship going back, back with Bennett the whole way until he, were, he first started out at Brisbane. You know what I mean? It, it would not shock me down the track to see him back yep. playing rugby. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I can't I'm believe he's walked away from 750 a year if he I. doesn't have plans outside his brace. I agree, of 15 grand a I, year. I'm going to make the call. I, I, I believe he, wa he walks away, he gets some sort of payout, right? Walks away, he has a couple of fights, then he signs for another club next year. He comes out, he's refreshed. He's rejuvenated. He wants to play again. He hasn't achieved what he set out to achieve in the game. He's got unfinished business. Do you write in his press conference? I, I, mean, I can see it happening. I can just see it happening. What, I, I just he's going to have to improve. Well, it, it, no, 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 no. Honestly. Because, no, because people are taking for the right price. And someone like Wayne Bennett would just throw, him, just throw him the olive branch and go, hey, I reckon this guy, 20 or 30 minutes, I can get something out of him. Mm. There's got to be a coach because coach is coach. And they all believe that they're better than the last guy. And that's dead set me just reading the tea leaves. I haven't spoken to Bennett today. I, I know nothing yeah. about it. I've just been around football long enough to know yeah. that two and two doesn't always yeah. equal four. So were the bull, uh, Bulldogs... The Bulldogs, ha they, were they happy to let him go? Were they shocked? What, what's the feedback there out of the club? They've, they've noticed a, a declining Tavita Pangai Jr., both on and off the field. Attitude? Just, not attitude, though, Gordy. Just a, a, a ambition, passion. This is a guy that I did an interview with him late September last year. He actually said and declared that if I'm not holding, if I'm not holding myself to a standard and that it dips below that standard, well, it's on me and I will effectively pack up and leave. Like he, he said, it'll be on no one else. It'll be on me. And he, he hasn't hit that mark. Jacob Preston is in his debut season. He's, he's doubled the amount of tackle bus than what supposed mm. powerhouse Tavita Pangai Jr. has. See, I, I think Pangai, again, you, get, you go back to his talent, but I, I truly do believe he was, if he was surrounded mm. by a better team, it could unlock, you know, the professionalism in him. Because that's what's missing. It, he goes out there, he has too many silly offloads, he makes too many mistakes. He's, he's, he hasn't he done this at three different clubs? He has, he has. Like we, we've been saying oh, this about P Tavita for a long time yeah. and we thought, OK, because it, it's like we go back again here and go, I remember when he saw it, well, he's going to the Bulldogs. They've got Serrado, 
They're, they're, they're making some big moves. They've bought Kikau. They've got Reed Marnie there. Like all that. And, and, and we're thinking they, they're going to get him to his best. Now he hasn't got to his best again. I'll, he'll go somewhere else and they'll get the best out of but it. But there's some players that just aren't leaders. They're followers. Mm. That they can't set a standard. And we've all played with them, Braith. And you've played yeah. with guys and they've been successful and they've played in grand finals. That they can't lead the centre. They don't get up in the dressing room. They don't talk. They don't lead the way. They're not the first on the training paddock or off. He might need to go to a club where there is a Bromwich or someone mm. bigger and stronger than him that's a you know, alpha he male. Goes, the this is what we're doing. No, no. And then Tavita's got to respect them enough. Well, you just said to it. Trust he him. just got to simplify his game, right? Absolutely. You said it on the show. Absolutely. And playing the ball and playing the ball quick yeah. would be that's. So if I ever signed Tavita Pangai, that's all I'd want him to I do. Think, is play I, the ball. Quick. I think the candles burn out in rugby league. Really? I do. And I think it, it'll only take a a you know this boxing mm. pursuit for him to realise what. He may have had in a rugby league career to, to which yep. point mm. it becomes a live option again. That's why he'll be back. That's why he'll be yeah, back. And his, now, talent, it's, his talent earns him the chance to get another chance. Like he was playing state of origin this year. We, we've, yeah. we haven't seen consistency in him, mm. yet they still pick him in the team. Mm. Oh, well, that was a bit of a shock to everyone when he got mm. selected. And he, no disrespect to Tavita, but he should never have mm. been picked for origin one. Now, the big question for all Bulldogs fans and for all of rugby league, really, who do they go for now? They've freed up the cap. They've got 750 now available next year. We saw the performance on the weekend. Tino's been signed. Fafita's been signed. Haas has been signed. They need a rampaging game-changer premiership forward. They've got the money to buy one now. Who do they go for? Or do they go for a forward or go for a seven? What, what do they do next? Well, they need both, don't they? Like, yes. if you look at the Bulldogs pack at the moment, they do need a leader. Like, that's why when, when Tino's name was first mentioned, you think about Tino, Tino's a leader. He, he would have been ideal for the Bulldogs. They also need a top-shelf halfback. Yeah. Like, and without those two, the Bulldogs won't be successful. So, or otherwise, it's a long build. Now, Gus did come out a month or so ago and say, you know, we're, we're here for the long haul, we're going to build from the ground up, yet they continue to buy quick-fix players. And I just don't know if... The, Braith, you went through the list there. Yeah. Tuno's off the market. Payne's off mm. the market. That's the problem for them Guys, right now. Yeah. Who is no, it? There is no one well, on the market. It's, it's, it's Fisher, it, Harrison, Leota. When are they off? Well, they're still on extended deals, Gordy. And this is, this is reverberating around the game, guys. The open market is effectively frozen because so, everyone, and it's probably on, a, on the back of the, the, the protracted CBA deals where there was so much uncertainty about the cap, clubs just started re-signing all their players and holding on to what they had. So therefore the market's dried up. And, and there aren't readily available quality elite level talent now on the open market for next mm. season. The Dogs are going to have to buy an off-contract 25 player, in, assign him you know, for 20, 25, 26 in the hope they can pull him earlier for 24 mm. and that player asks for an early release. That's the only hope. Otherwise... There's, not, there's nothing there. Yeah. There's nothing there. Can it be a tough one for the Bulldogs who have got the money, but can they find the right players?